Good morning, Endeavour Mir, and especially to Andy, this being, of course, Australia Day. Good morning, Houston, and good morning, Mark. Greetings from space, and uh, happy birthday to Australia from the crew of Endeavour and Space Station Mir. Terry, we see and hear you. Go ahead. Good. I uh, just talked with Andy. He's very pleased with his suit fit. They did adjust it. It fits the way it was supposed to fit to begin with, so he's very happy with it. That includes the pressure check. Well, that's great news, Terry, and you can pass on that we uh, have been uh, working this pretty hard here on the ground uh, to try and get to that conclusion. We're very happy to hear that you got it solved on board. Yeah, that's all taken care of. And if you're meeting with Bill Reedy, please tell him we said hello. Welcome. Good evening to all of you from Phoenix. If I could address perhaps this first question to Mission Specialist Andrew Thomas. Andrew, we've heard much talk today about this space suit that apparently did not fit. Maybe you could tell us about that and how you fixed the problem. Uh, yeah, the suit that I would wear in the event of needing to do an emergency evacuation in the Soyuz uh, wasn't quite sized properly. And when I tried it on yesterday and to do a pressure test of the suit, it it wouldn't fit, I couldn't get it on. This morning we made some adjustments. There's some adjusting straps on the suit. And after we did that, I was able to down and off the suit properly, and we did the pressure checks, and it worked out fine now. So uh, I feel good about it. That's why you should never travel without your sewing kit. Okay, if I could talk to Commander Terrence Wilcutt now. Commander, why don't you describe the area that you're in for us, and maybe give us an idea where you're at. Well, it's, uh, we're in the Mira base block, and uh, this is uh, the area we're surrounding is their kitchen table, basically. And I guess like uh, most homes, uh, guests like to gather in the kitchen. And also in here we have uh, the cosmonauts' sleeping quarters off to right just behind me to the left and over to the right. Uh, they've got uh, the main control for the entire Mira space station located in front of us behind the camera as she would be looking at us. And uh, also there's other things that would make uh, life comfortable here. There's uh, a cassette player, uh, other lots of camera equipment, uh, movies, books, uh, you name it. This is where people gather to live. Mm -hmm. Also, pilot Joe Edwards is, uh, Joe Franklin Edwards is also aboard. I'm assuming that there's been much talk about sending John Glenn back into space. There, that's been a lot of talk amongst the crew. What do you think of that? Well, we're, actually, we're all excited to see him coming back to the office and looking forward to uh, sitting around with him and talking. And, and I guess pretty much everyone here looks forward to having the opportunity to fly with him. Okay. Endeavor, this is WSBT. How do you hear me? Loud and clear. Go right ahead. All right. Some questions for our fellow Hoosier, uh, Dr. Wolf, who is up there. Uh, doctor, you have just passed a milestone of sorts, four months in space. A uh, question would be, despite the rigorous training that you go through, any mental or physical problems that you never thought of being up in space for four months? Well, uh, it surprised me just how good a person can feel in space. Uh, even after four months, I still feel better and better every day. And uh, it's amazing the human body can adapt so well. It's a heavy workload. And that's something that you just have to be prepared to do when you work in space. But we got a lot done. Uh, you will have a colleague in space, Senator John Glenn, who is uh, a good, uh, by the time he gets up there, he's uh, 35 years older than you. Uh, your view on that? Of course, he's a man who is in exquisite physical condition. Uh, I think that would just be fantastic to uh, bring Senator Glenn back into the astronaut office and, and to fly again, and it would be a great privilege. Uh, any of us would love to do that. Uh, if you could tell us uh, the image of the space station mirror, and to a great degree it's perpetuated by stand-up comics uh, down here on Earth, 
is that it's somehow a contraption held together by uh, duct tape and bailing wire. That can't be. Tell us about the condition of Mir. Well, I can assure you that the workmanship is of the highest quality uh, possible. The welds are of the finest quality. All the electrical wiring and connectors are pristine. Uh, of course, it could use some new carpet and uh, some fixing up, but it's mostly cosmetic. It's a very safe station, and Commander Soloviev here uh, maintains it, and as does Pavel uh, Vinogradov, the main engineer, uh, in top condition. Uh, doctor, why don't you tell us uh, what we see on the screen? What is surrounding you up there right now that we can see? Well, what you're looking at is the dinner table and kind of the main living area where people gather. There's some tools over there on that side. There's a group of computers where we receive uh, mail and operational information. This is where we get water. That's the food over there. So this is kind of a kitchen gathering place and, and also kind of a work table area. Doctor, your view uh, somewhere down the road of the merits of, of say, a U.S.-based space station? Well, it's an international space station on the books. We'll begin assembling it later this year, and it includes many countries, Europe, Japan, uh, South America, North uh, Canada, uh, and, of course, our main partners are Russia. And in fact, we're on, of course, a Russian space station right now, and they bring a great deal of experience to the table. Uh, I have to ask, did you get to watch the Super Bowl up there yesterday? Did we get to watch it? No, I'm afraid not. Because there was some talk that they might try to get the feed to you, but you, you didn't get to see it. I was just wondering what your uh, Russian colleagues might have thought of American football up there, but uh, they were probably working too hard, I would guess. So why don't we ask them? Stuti Dumas, American football. American football. I was once during a, at a real football game, and I think you have to be born in America, and uh, it's, uh, you have to not only live it and feel it to be able to appreciate it. Well, he said that uh, he's only one time been to a real American football game, but it's not a big tradition in Russia, but uh, as in any sport event, it's, it's a great thing to go to. And, Dr. Wolf, final question for you. Do you. What has this meant to you personally, you know, expanding your thoughts, your mind being up there? Well, it's incredible what, it, what this does psychologically to a person uh, to be away from the Earth and then come back. I can only hope that I can drag back the feelings uh, that I have for instance, uh, uh, the, the pulling in in your car to a stop and go and getting a cup of coffee sounds like just a great, great deal of fun to me, and I hope that every little thing is as fun as it seems like it will be. I'm going to try to hold on to that. That would be, uh, what would, what's your lasting memory you think will be of being up there in space? It's, it's our partnership between the people, the relationship that we develop between, the, between ourselves. And in fact, that's a, a big part of the goal of the International Space Station. Is to, it's probably the biggest project ever been attempted in peacetime between countries. And uh, it, it'll be a great difficulty and a great uh, benefit to, as we do this International Space Station. It must make you feel that it really is a small world, isn't it? Yeah, we get around it about every hour and a half. Where are you right now? As, as we are speaking, you are uh, still over Russia. I knew you were as, uh, before we went into the interview, but hey, you fly fast up there. We're just approaching the east, coming off the east coast of Siberia, approaching Japan uh, in the western Pacific. When we first started talking with you, we were just north of India. We've maybe gone uh, 4,000 miles. It's to those of us who are, you know, forever down here on Earth. I mean, it's just, 
it seems so fascinating. I mean, uh, almost you can't even understand it. Uh, did you really have to get up there, Doctor, to, to get a feel for all of that? No matter how much training you had, you had to see it with your own eyes? I guess uh, the, the, the space traveler's paradox is that it's, it's, incre it's impossible to describe the feelings and the, the emotions and what you see in space. Uh, it's frustrating to try to describe, but you do, and in fact, you do have to be here to feel it, but we sure want to try to share it with the whole world. In fact, we look at that as an important part of our job. And, Doctor, tell us uh, then just how your journey will finish. Uh, give us uh, the dates and the times, where you'll be landing and all of that. Uh, we're going to be undocking day after tomorrow, and then we'll spend a day and a half in orbit preparing for entry, and uh, then this great crew that's practiced so hard to do uh, fly the space shuttle will... Uh, do their good work and we will land on the 31st I believe at about 6 in the evening roughly Florida time and as they say Godspeed to you thank you Endeavor WSBT clear thank you so it looks like we're getting down to the end of things here Pretty, well, we've got to take out the MGBX tonight yet and, and change over this uh, tissue culture equipment, but I think we're pretty much closing out most of our items. Uh, we've got a few hard ones yet that we're waiting on, but uh, they're little items that I think we can come home without. That's how I see it right now. Glad to hear it, Dave. I know you've had a, uh, a very busy four months, and I know that the guys who brought Endeavor up to you have had an extremely busy four days, so uh, we'd be happy to have the pace slacken off just a little. Very good. I tell you, the team's clicking real nice up here, and uh, it's just a pleasure being with uh, my American friends again, and uh, th this whole thing's just a wonderful experience. I can't wait to see you on the ground, and and uh, maybe you'll get, drag me through the ski course a time or two. Will do.